When hunting whitetails, it's important to follow the food sources, and that's going to change throughout the season. And likely, it's something you can target for your chance at an early season deer. Just like our yearly life, the whitetail deer's yearly life is built around transitions. Spring to summer, summer to fall, fall to winter. Most of my early season hunting, it starts out in the west, and the best forage to focus on at that time of the year is alfalfa. I always like to set up near soybean fields too. So that's the first thing. The first thing we look at is like man-made forages, whether it's a farm crop or a food plot. Early on, you're probably going to target agricultural crops such as soybeans, uh, maybe uh, an early season food plot, even fruit trees. And just like that, deer are gonna be transitioning from winter food to spring food to summer food. And with this forage available and no hunting pressure in the early season yet or none to speak of, you should have a good chance of seeing them in broad daylight and not only one buck, but multiple bucks. As summer leads to fall, deer transition from the green leafy, from, like I said, alfalfa, clover, soybeans, they start transitioning to native browse and native mast more often. The point is that the seasons are gonna change, the food sources are gonna change throughout the season, and you need to adapt your tactics to allow for that. Uh, don't expect deer to be in the same place throughout the season because they are gonna move with those food sources, and you need to adapt and you need to change right along with them. Deer are gonna shift more towards native browse. And that's helpful when you know what the native browse species, the preferred species in your area that deer like to eat. Where I'm at, there's sumac, there's berry brush, there's all sorts of maple browse, there's all sorts of native browse that they like. So if you can't figure it out, talk to a local game warden, game biologist. They know what foods are out there that the deer like, and likely it's something you can target for your chance at an early season deer. So when you think about transitions, think about the man-made sources, the farm crops, the food plots, and then think about the hardwood mast, acorns. Think about soft mast. Uh, soft mast could come in the shape of plums. It could come in the shape of grapes, apples, all sorts of soft mast that deer love. Persimmons, huge in the south. And then native browse. Native browse, it's not like you're going to set your tree stand up over some sumac browse. But you're going to know that if you're in an area with a clear cut, for example, aspen regrowth, berry brush re regrowth, high protein preferred foods that deer love, you can put that puzzle together and have a plan for when you go hunting around transition areas. Now everything changes once the rut kicks in. Once it's November, deer are on the move and things change. But you still need to focus on food sources. That's where the does are gonna be, and that's where the bucks are gonna be. But the difference in hunting during the ruck, as say it's hunting in September, is that you're gonna to wanna to be on stand all day, because you never know when those deer are gonna get up and be moving. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback, Cuddylink, 16 cameras, one sale plan, $10 per month. Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology, Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by B&W Trailer Hitches Tow and Stow, the last trailer hitch you'll ever need. The absolute best food plot for attracting whitetails during fall hunting season is Buck Forage Oats. This is their highest priority, and it's done in the world's greatest, most winter tolerant oats ever developed. 
visit their website at buckforge.com or better yet, give them a call at 800-299-6287. Well, we're visiting northeastern Wyoming hunting antelope and deer this week. And most people, when you mention Wyoming, they think of elk or mule deer, but it is a hotbed for whitetails. You're gonna come here and you're gonna see not dozens, but up, you know, some days you're gonna see hundreds of deer just driving to and from your different blinds and, and setups where you're gonna hunt. So Wyoming is a sleeper for whitetails. It's very unique. Uh, there's some great bucks and uh, there's lots of people that really need to reach out and discover it. Well, we're here with Trophy Ridge Outfitters. They offer a combination hunt for the early archery seasons. And we're here to hunt pronghorn antelope and whitetail deer. Actually, our deer permit allows us to take either a mule deer or a whitetail. And we started off uh, sitting in a blind the first morning for antelope. And it's one of those scenarios where you're not going to shoot the first one that comes in because you're always going to hold out and wait for a bigger one. And uh, at first I thought I was going to pass that one, but then when he turned sideways I knew that I had to give it a shot. And thank goodness he gave me some time. He put on a bit of a show for us, did some talking and grunting and looking around for the ladies. And uh, started rubbing his, the side of his face and his glands on the sagebrush. Uh, marking his territory, of course, and I let an arrow fly. And I shot a great buck. A really good old, heavy horned, lots of mass, lots of extra little junk on him. Uh, couldn't ask for a better pronghorn with, uh, with wow. a 10 point crossbow. It was a great experience. Look at that gnarly old buck. Oh my goodness. That is just ridiculous. He has junk all over the place. Beautiful. Exit right, right where you want it. I don't think he went 25 yards. I think everyone comes out here antelope hunting thinking, oh, I'm gonna hold out, I'm gonna look at a bunch of antelope, you know, try to shoot a big one. Well, this is the first buck we had come in. <laughs> there was no way I was letting him go. Look at the character on this old boy. He has got a gnarly set of horns with lots of junk out the back and the sides. What a great, archery antelope. That was a great start to the week and a great way to experience Wyoming where there's more antelope than people. After the pronghorn antelope hunt we went right to work on our deer hunt and you know the outfitter here has lots of different stands. There's blinds and tree stands, good situations. They've got them really well scouted. You know trail camera pictures of deer coming by the exact setups for archery which is what you're looking for in a guided hunt, someone to do the legwork for you. Well, we're basically hunting over deer candy tonight. You can see the alfalfa is extremely green. Getting into the fall, all the vegetation, the native vegetation hardens off, it gets brown, it gets, uh, it gets coarse for the animals to eat. Of course, the alfalfa gets a second or third cut. The first cut is woody, each cut afterwards becomes more succulent and the deer know it. They know how to find it. It's like a magnet for them. We got pines and uh, high ridges around us. Those bucks go up high in bed in the wind where it's a bit cooler. They work their way down to these food plots or the alfalfa in the evening. It's coming down not to come in. So fingers crossed. The food's here. The deer are definitely here. It's just with the wind and the placement tonight whether we're in the exact right spot. Don't go away. Been going through a bit of a drought here in this part of Wyoming. Things are really dry, but uh, we brought rain with us, I think. 
This segment of Land of Whitetail TV is brought to you by Outdoor Edge. Make the cut. Well, we're here with Trophy Ridge Outfitters. They offer a combination hunt for the early archery seasons. And we started off uh, sitting in a blind the first morning for antelope, and I shot a great buck. What a great archery antelope. After the pronghorn antelope hunt, we went right to work on our deer hunt. You might notice that I have my rangefinder just hanging here. Whenever I'm hunting in a blind, I like to set up a hook or something so that I have it handy. You can actually pick it up and range real quick. And you're not fumbling to get it back in a pocket or something, you can just set it down. This morning, that was invaluable. We had that antelope come in, ran back up the hill, did a real quick check on the range, set it down. It saves a lot of time. You're not fumbling in your pockets or containers. You're not dropping it on the ground, making noise. It's just a real smart way to use your rangefinder when you need it. The wind has been a challenge this week. Wyoming probably 99% of the time has west or northwest winds. And we had east and southeast and some south winds, which didn't work well for a lot of stands. But of course, there's enough here that we did find places to hunt. still there's not much wind but uh, there's always hope not a lot of water in this area we're hunting a water source this morning so we're hoping a big buck will stop in for a drink before he goes to bed for the day it's still supposed to be pretty warm today so they're gonna need to drink and we had a great morning there was lots of activity lots of deer got to see lots of uh, behavior and social interaction between them so it was a fun morning we didn't get that big buck to come in but we saw lots of deer, we set up right, and I would definitely come and sit back here and again. You know, there's some unique things in Wyoming. We're over by Devil's Tower, which is a national monument and a very unique geological phenomenon itself. But look at this petrified wood, old, still looks like a tree. Speaking of old, I've been hunting here for many years, and I found an old bottle of my scent killer. This one actually has the autumn formula in it. You know, the nice thing about uh, Wildlife Research Center stuff, this has been here for years, but it still works. So if you find it in your closet, in your old hunting pack, make sure you put it to use because whenever you can have an advantage over whitetails, take it. Well, we've been waiting for this all week, but tonight we finally got the wind we've been waiting for. We've had a lot of rain. So we're really hoping they're gonna flood off the hills tonight, right down through this uh, gate in front of us and into the alfalfa field. It's a prime setup. Uh, the other day we had to set up further down the field because of the wind. We got our fingers crossed, we're right down to the wire on this one. They had been going through a bit of a drought here in this part of Wyoming. Things were really dry, but uh, we brought rain with us, I think. Arrow made good contact, you could hear the thud. It, I can actually see the arrow laying in the field here, so a good pass through. This is the part that always drives you crazy, makes you nervous, you know. I, I'm not second guessing the shot, but we haven't recovered the deer, and that's always the ultimate goal for everyone when they're bow hunting or hunting deer of any kind. So we're gonna give them a bit of time, gonna go out here, check the arrow, have a look. We do have some blood here. We followed these tracks where he's been kicking up. He was running fast, so it was easy to find his his hoof mark with the dew claws with this mud from the rain and of course it's raining now so we're trying to find the blood fairly quick and unfortunately we didn't find him yet tonight we're gonna let him sit overnight and see if we can't recover him in the morning uh, just one drop at a time in the wet grass it was painstaking we stayed on it just had a stick Put it in as a marker, we'd find the next spot, 
We spent several hours doing that and tracked that buck for several hundred yards across a big open flat on top of one of these ridges. As they continued to look for the blood, it worked all the way back and forth as I was coming down. Got to this last ridge, I looked down along the river and saw a couple magpies. So we came over here, can lift my binos, I can see a deer carcass over there. Finally get to see him. Oh, there he is. Beautiful Wyoming whitetail. Oh, I just wish I could have found him a little quicker. Anyways, the 10 point did get it done. It was a great hunt. I hope to come back and visit Ralph and Lenore again next year at Trophy Ridge. I mean, every time I come here, I have a great experience. And it's a very special place. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Sever Broadheads, straight through it. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows. Outdoor Edge, make the cut. And by Sportsman's Guide. Nobody sells more tree stands, nobody sells them for less. Sportsmansguide.com. If I'm driving to my hunting location, the packing process is really pretty simple. I just throw everything I could possibly use in my truck and off I go. But if I'm flying to the location, that's a different story. And it's gonna require some forethought and some planning. This might seem a little bit anal, but I keep a list of all the different hunts I go on on the computer, the different types of hunts. It gives me a starting point when I start packing my gear. I can go in, I can look at the list, and it gives me all the gear that I'll possibly need on this hunt. Now, I'll go in and fine tune that list um, for the specific hunt that I'm going on, but it gives me a really good start. Now, the cool thing about this is, if I pack over the course of a weekend or even a week, I can come back and I can see which items I've already packed and which items I, I still need to pack. I'll just go in and I'll change the stuff that I've already packed. I might just highlight it in blue. Everything else still needs to be packed. So just a good starting point to keep everything organized and to make sure I don't forget anything. For any airport trip, for any hunt that I'm flying to, I basically take three pieces of luggage. I've got my hard shell. Uh, gun case. I've got one medium-sized duffel and I've got my backpack which will be my carry-on. So I basically got two checked pieces of luggage. Now the gun case, in addition to the gun, I'll usually put anything else that's fragile in here. Any optics I'm going to be using will always go into this case. Um, here I've got my rangefinder, my binocular, my camera, and lens. What I'm trying to do is get some of the weight um, out of this bag and into here and anything in here that I want to protect. The other thing you need to know is that you don't keep your ammo in the case with your gun. Ammo has to go in the other bag and it has to be in its original packaging. You know, the key of course is distribute your weight so everything comes in under 50 pounds. And you know, for eight bucks, you should probably get one of these. It's a baggage scale. It's worth it to go out and get a scale like this so you can make sure your luggage is under that 50 pound mark so you don't get charged uh, for overweight baggage. Packing for a hunting trip, it's not rocket science, but it pays to be organized so that you have all the gear that you possibly could need when you arrive at your destination. Early January 2019, 10 Point released a bunch of new products, including this new Turbo M1. You talk about speed, penetration, and flat trajectory. And that is dead in the center. Right out of the box, first shot, dead center. And we're talking dead center. This is an extremely lightweight crossbow. It's a conventional draw. And you know what, it, at first look, it doesn't look like it's uh, that powerful, but it's a sleeper, I'll tell you what. It's very narrow, um, nine inches when fully cocked, but look at these cams. The reverse cam technology brings your string further up, which means you have a longer power stroke. Flatter trajectory increases your power, your energy. This bow is shooting 380 feet per second. These come fully assembled with the scope. 
This one has the AccuDraw Pro. Cock these very simply with the handle that's built into them. T5 trigger, anti-drive fire. Uh, it's got all the safety components, even the way the stock is designed. There's no way you can get your fingers in the way of the string. It got to him so fast and the bow was so quiet, the deer didn't react a bit and it was dead quiet. I mean, the deer didn't jump the string. He never reacted until the arrow hit him. There is a beautiful Oklahoma whitetail. You know, I'm pretty fortunate. I think this is the first kill for the Turbo M1. And of course, they've got a dressed in mossy oak breakup. Love it. It just helps you stay well concealed, whether you're in a blind or tree stand or spot and stock, whatever. It, uh, you know, we, we camouflage everything else. Why wouldn't we put it on our bow? The Turbo M1, he started at $8.99, ready to hunt.